Okay, good afternoon everybody uh, and welcome to our recorded version of the Safer Internet Day briefing session for Wales. Uh, we massively apologise for the audio issues that those of you who managed to make the session experience this afternoon. Uh, no idea what happened, the technology was working fine in uh, testing and then obviously as technology does it just let us down uh, on the day so we, we're hugely apologetic for that uh, we hope that this recording will provide you with the information that you need to make the most of safer internet day 2021 uh, we're going to go start from the beginning and, and run through everything again just so we make sure that you've got everything uh, that you need and you have a full understanding of what safer internet day is all about and we'll also include a link to the video and a copy of the slides for you to use as well um, so I'll pass over to Kate just to say hello. Hello everybody and uh, yeah I'll echo what Andrew said about the tech. Um, sometimes these things are just not with us and we appreciate everybody who attended patience and feedback um, and hopefully this will be a much more reliable way of engaging with all of the content today. Um, so a quick overview of the aims of this afternoon's uh, meeting. Um, we're going to be talking about Safer Internet Day 2021 and all of the exciting things that are planned for the day and the support that's available to organisations taking part. We'll also have a quick update from the UK Safer Internet Centre, that's the coordinating body behind Safer Internet Day, um, and we'll have a look back at uh, 2020's campaign as well, just to see uh, the great uh, reach and impact that that had. Uh, next slide, please. So. Uh, Safer Internet Day is brought to you by the UK Safer Internet Centre, which is a partnership of three leading online safety charities, Childnet, the Internet Watch Foundation and the Southwest Grid. I'm going to hand over first of all to Tess, who's going to talk to you a little bit about the Internet Watch Foundation and what's going on there. Hi, yes, and I also obviously echo our apologies for you know, this morning, sometimes we just don't go to plan. Um, so yes, my name is Tess Leyland. I work in policy and public affairs at the Internet Watch Foundation. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, we provide the hotline function to the UK Safer Internet Centre, and we are the UK hotline for the reporting and removal of images and videos of child sexual abuse online. Um, so 2019 was unfortunately our, big, our busiest year as a, um, as a hotline, uh, though I think it has actually been eclipsed by 2020. And in 2019, the 13 analysts in our hotline assessed over 260,000 reports of, um, of uh, web pages suspected to contain this criminal imagery. Of these, 132,000 were confirmed to contain images and videos of children suffering this abuse. Um, it's worth saying at this point that when we talk about reports, we're talking about web pages and URLs, um, and every web page could contain anything from one to thousands of images and videos, which really does equate to millions and millions of images removed every year. Um, and as you can see from the slides, this counts to every four minutes uh, unless identified a web page that showed this abuse. The sort of one key trend that I want to quickly sort of like zero in on very briefly is that of what we term self-generated child sexual abuse, which is effectively non-contact abuse in which children are, we believe, are coerced, tricked or, or groomed into producing imagery over webcam that I, you know, through live stream that is then sort of captured by offenders and distributed further. And we believe without the child's prior knowledge and we find it on sort of dedicated criminal sites. In 2019, this accounted for just under one third or 40,000 um, reports actioned by our analysts. And as you can see, overwhelmingly, this affected girls aged 11 to 13, though I should stress not only girls aged 11 to 13. Uh, unfortunately, this trend has continued throughout 2020. And in the first six months, it accounted for 44% uh, of everything that our analysts actioned. Um, now, my last sort of key point to land you with is that as a UK Safer Internet Centre in earlier this year, we took on the All Party Parliamentary Group for Social Media, uh, and we launched our first inquiry on Monday, which will be into the rise of this abuse, and we have now issued a call for evidence. So if you have any insights, because obviously education is a devolved matter, if you have any insights or experience or you know any educational initiatives that you're running then please do feel free to submit evidence um, you can find details on the UK Safer Internet Centre website if you just search APPG for social media um, and submissions are open to the 31st of January um, and that's everything for me so I'm going to now pass on to Andrew at Southwest Grid. 
Petas, thanks very much for that uh, little overview and insight into the work of the IWF, which is, which is an incredibly important component. All three of us uh, offer different parts and facets of the UK Safer Internet Centre and here at South West Grid. Uh, we've been doing a number of different things over the last uh, few years, I mean, it, it particularly and notably, uh, we've recently launched uh, Report Harmful Content. It was in beta version the last couple of years as we tested it and, and sorted it out. And now we've got this fantastic service giving you the opportunity to report harmful content. Now, harmful content is that content which may be harmful to you but doesn't fit into an illegal category so it's things that maybe like online bullying or, or stalking or, or some of that that, that uh, sexualized content that you just need some help with uh, we've got a, a team of, su of supportive members of staff who you can contact through our website reportharmfulcontent.com and they will offer you support in taking content down where they can do uh, we have a, a unique relationship with providers and platforms uh, nurtured over a number of years uh, many of whom ha have we have trusted flagger status with. Uh, we also offer a similar service for professionals through the Professionals Online Safety Helpline. Uh, that's for anybody who works with children and young people. You can contact us by phone during between 10 and 4 and um, email outside of those hours anonymously if you want to, to discuss an issue for yourself, for a, a learner you work with or for your organisation. Or if you just have a question about something that you're experiencing online, you just need a bit of support and guidance with that. Uh, we're there for you as a professional please do get in touch with us uh, many of you watching this, I imagine, given that, that the registrations were, were mostly from schools, you'll know about 360 Degree Safe Cymru, uh, the Welsh Safer Welsh Online Safety Self Review Toolkit. Uh, that's available through hub at hub.gov.wales. It gives you uh, a range of aspects you can assess yourselves against and look at it, how you can improve your pr practice and policy around online safety. Another thing that you might find helpful if you're within a school context is uh, the test filtering service that we offer at testfiltering.com. That essentially just gives you a, a check of the type of content that your internet connection is filtering against. So we could give you things like the cake list and things like inappropriate content. Uh, we'll just test that for you from your device and give you a report on screen. You can run that any way you like. It doesn't have to be an educational organisation, but you do have to be connected to the Wi-Fi network you'd like to assess. A uh, final thing to point out is Online Safety Live is one of our, our key outreach opportunities. Uh, we offer a number of sessions across the, the, the year that you can attend. At the moment, we're offering those online, about an hour and a half uh, of conversation around online safety, updates around information, things that have changed, things that are available to you. You can find out more information about that at onlinesafetylive.com and, of course, on the Welsh Government's hub website at hub.gov.wales. There we go, Kate, over to you. Thanks, Andrew. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of uh, ChildNet's role in the UK Safer Internet Centre. We have two major roles. One of them is coordinating Safer Internet Day in the UK, and the other one is around uh, resources, advice, guidance for teachers, educators, parents, and young people themselves. So um, you can see there are a few of the online learning materials that we've been developing um, that support um, the PSHE curriculum uh, on particular topics, for instance, on online sexual harassment. Our STAR toolkit, which we're launching in full next month, but some of it's already available on our website, is for, um, it's been developed um, in partnership with uh, special educational needs settings um, involving young people and teachers in uh, reviewing, uh, testing and feeding back the resources uh, for those settings before they're published. Uh, we also um, offer uh, video content and home learning content as well as some really exciting uh, initiatives for young people to take part in with their peers. For instance, our Digital Leaders Programme, uh, which is um, uh, a program for schools whereby a small group of children uh, take on a leadership role within the school and use a gamified e-learning platform to train as digital leaders. This means that they can go on to um, teach um, their peers and to run assemblies, awareness raising campaigns or whatever they want to do in their schools. And the other one that we've got up there is our ChildNet film competition which is open to young people in school um, and this year of course because uh, many schools were not open to many pupils um, during the spring. Um, we also opened it up to families and individual young people to take part to create a small video clip um, a small film or to create a storyboard around an aspect of online safety. We're pleased to say that this year we had 
more entries than ever, despite all of the challenges that schools and families were facing through the spring. So that's it from ChildNet. Uh, those are the three organisations in the UK Safer Internet Centre. We're here today to talk about Safer Internet Day 2021, which if there's only one thing that you take away from today, it is that Safer Internet Day is on Tuesday, the 9th of February, 2021. That's the date of the day. Please put it in your diaries now. Absolutely, can and, you get um, that one right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and I want to take you through very quickly what Safer Internet Day is all about. So um, Safer Internet Day, it's all about giving young people a voice, making sure that their voices are heard on the theme of online safety. What we want to do really is empower UK families, um, schools, teachers, educators and young people. And every year we want to reach more young people than we ever have done before. So there are thousands of youth engagement happen, activities that happen in schools, um, youth groups, um, in organisations across the UK, uh, young people uh, teaching each other um, and uh, leading things like assemblies or lessons or awareness raising campaigns in their schools as well. Um, at Chardonnay, we also uh, do a large piece of youth research to support the campaign on a particular aspect of, uh, of the day as well. Uh, so last time around, um, all of the activities that we did um, and meant that we were able to reach 49%. Uh, so half of UK young children had heard about the day. And that is really our core aim because we know that when we reach young people, the day can have an enormous impact for them. So the very strong majority of those who hear about the day say that they feel more confident about what to do if they're worried online as a result of finding out about the day. Um, lots of them say that they speak to somebody about something that had been worrying them online. And uh, this time around, we focused on online identity and uh, what it takes to be free to be yourself um, online. And uh, as a result of that theme that we focused on this time around, this very strong majority of young people say they felt they, they know what to do if they or someone they know is targeted online because they are different in some way, which is enormously positive that uh, young people are confident they know how to react to bullying or targeting in that way as well. Um, so that's the huge impact that the day can have. But we also reach an enormous number of parents too. So over 25% of parents in the UK um, heard about the day in 2020. And again, as a result, we know that the day has an enormous positive impact so most of those parents end up having a conversation about online safety on or around Safer Internet Day because they've heard about it. And a quarter of parents who find out about the day actually speak to somebody about concerns they've had about their child online, and a lot of them feel more confident. Um, for the first time this year, we also um, got young people to devise and come up with, uh, with our help, a, a youth charter, which um, called on um, parliamentarians, MPs, the government, industry, parents, carers, schools, uh, to take action to support them to be safe online. And we handed that in to MPs on Safer Internet Day in Parliament. So we've got some young people uh, to come and talk to um, over two dozen MPs um, in Parliament on the day. And the day trended on social media, got national press broadcast coverage, which is fantastic. Uh, so there's a huge social media engine and a huge social media campaign behind the day as well. And we know that thousands of organisations across the UK get involved with Safer Internet Day. Um, and it's because of their involvement that we're able to reach so many young people. So this is just a flavour of the sorts of organisations that get involved with the day. Thanks, Andrew. So just to focus a little bit more on Safer Internet Day 2021, our aim is always to inspire a national conversation about the safe, effective, creative use of technology and reaching more young people than ever before. It's a great opportunity for children to speak up and for us adults to engage and listen to them. And for next time around, we've got a really exciting theme that we've worked directly with young people to devise and test. We're focusing on trust, exploring reliability in the online world. So we want young people to be supported to question and challenge and change the online world around them. We know that the internet has enormous possibilities 
um, and enormous potential for creativity and fun and communication for all young people. This year, more than ever, young people have been using the internet for all of their everyday lives. So from keeping in touch with friends and family, to entertainment, to play, to doing their homework, to attending school, all of the normal everyday things that young people do have been online. And the internet has this amazing range of information opportunities and can help us see different points of view. But not all of what young people see online is genuine, is fact, is truthful. And what we want to do is help them separate the fact from the fiction and the genuine from the misleading. We want to help them navigate that online world where not everything is sometimes quite how it seems and to be able to uh, develop their critical thinking skills so that they can discover sort of make those decisions about who and what to believe and trust online. We're also mindful of the fact that dealing with and navigating sort of fake content and experiences can has a an impact on young people. And that's very much what they told us when we um, asked them about this issue. So when we spoke to uh, young people um, in primary schools, um, they were particularly interested in telling us about their experience of online advertising, um, bloggers, influencers, and um, they, they understand why influencers and bloggers are there to make money to, uh, to, to, to promote a particular brand and to promote what they're doing. But there is nevertheless a sort of frustration and annoyance and disappointment about what they term clickbait. Content that isn't really real or that is just really about getting the highest number of people to click on it. They find it kind of yeah, boring. Um, they do mention things like um, fake news and sponsored content. Um, but and they're often fine with it unless it's been added in sneakily. They get it, but they're just not that happy about it. And it does have a negative impact on their, um, on their experiences online. When we asked pupils in secondary schools, um, they used the term fake news a lot more. Um, and uh, had also sort of come across conspiracy theories and things like that. And again, their response to um, things like influencers and bloggers and that sort of faked or advertising content. Some of them say it's okay, or they don't mind as long as the product is okay for them, but others are annoyed by it. They're kind of nonplussed by it. They, one of them um, that we asked, it was really interesting. They, so they, they think I give, I think before I give credit to what they say. So they're already employing those critical thinking skills and trying to decide what to sort of believe and trust and having to navigate that is uh, having a, a negative impact on them as well. Um, we'll send you a link along with this to um, a very short video clip from some of our digital champions who are part of our digital leaders program at Chartnet talking in a little bit more depth about this issue and why it's important to them. I really encourage you to watch it because it's just a, a one minute, 45 second, uh, really valuable uh, insight into what young people think about, uh, about the topic of um, fake news, misinformation, advertised content um, and uh, critical thinking. So the next thing I wanted to talk you through very quickly was our education materials that we're developing. Now, these will be available from next week in English and Welsh. And we've developed um, packs of materials for every age group, as well as for teachers and parents. And we've done them a little bit differently this time for those of you who've been involved in SID before. Um, so we have based all of our learning resources on PowerPoint uh, with accessible design and the adaptation suggestions. The adaptations include things like uh, changes that can be made or suggestions for um, special educational needs uh, settings and for remote learning um, and uh, for school closure or, or, or hybrid learning as well across online platforms. So just to take you through those in a little bit more detail, and I think some of these slides are in Welsh, so I'm going to refer to my notes because I don't speak Welsh. Um, our pack for ages three to seven is focused all around our brand new book. Uh, it's the third in the DigiDuck series, um, and it's all about DigiDuck becoming a detective. Uh, DigiDuck is set some homework from school. He researches online 
and is quite surprised when he gets it wrong. So um, to try and uh, figure out how he could discover what's reliable online, he gets some help from Wise Owl, from his parents, and from some other characters in the book uh, to look at different ways in which you can uh, test and verify the information that you find online. So it's a really exciting book and edition and all of the learning resources, for instance, the assembly and uh, the examples that we've produced for young people to look at um, are based around DigiDuck and Detective DigiDuck's book. For ages seven to 11, we wanted to really focus on the, the topics that they felt were important to us when we spoke to them. And so um, it really focuses on influencers and adverts. And what we wanted to get young people to do is to think about the motivation that is behind some of the content that they will see online. Um, to recognize that motivation and then um, to be able to, to be able to sort of use some of the language that they're uh, really thinking about and seeing every day. So looking at the unboxing, the collab, the merch, etc. So that's exciting uh, to be focusing on influencers and adverts with ages seven to 11. But ages 11 to 14, we wanted them to get, uh, to get to grips with the nuance and the spectrum around the content that may not be reliable that they see online. So looking, at, looking with them at how much they might trust uh, something that they see and what clues they can come up with that would enable them to decipher whether they feel something is trustworthy or not. We also wanted to get them to start thinking about the impact that unreliable content can have on young people and how it makes them feel. So looking with them at how you decide what to trust. And for ages 14 to 18, uh, we developed three lesson plans on three different topics, on influencers, on fake news, and on targeted advertising. So there's three different options to take up with ages 14 to 18. For parents, we produced some guides. So um, for the first time this year, I think we wanted to uh, give parents and carers uh, some knowledge and skills around the topic area, as well as some tools. So this came from uh, the young people that we spoke to when we were researching this topic with them. And we found that particularly because of lockdown, um, young people had begun to need to navigate situations at home or with their family members where a family member had shared a piece of fake content or a conspiracy theory or some misinformation on the family WhatsApp group, for instance. And they needed to engage with that adult in their life to be able to have a conversation with them uh, to let them know that that had happened. Thanks very much for that overview, Kate. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time to take us through some of those education resources and for the plans for all of Safer Internet Day 2021. Uh, this slide just giving you the opportunity to remind you that the date for Safer Internet Day next year is Tuesday the 9th of February. As you can see, Kate and Tess sadly have had to leave us right now, so you're just left with me to finish up the rest of the presentation this afternoon. I'm just going to take you through a couple of thoughts here. Um, so first, I just want to share with you that uh, on the Welsh Government's hub site at hub.gov.wales, you can find out information about the Tackling Misinformation Digital Storytelling Competition. This year for Safer Internet Day 2021, we wanted to work in partnership with, with uh, the Welsh Government to run a competition that really tackles some of those challenges that we've been talking about and that Kate has been mentioning. Um, that issue of being able to discern the difference between truthful and not truthful information online. We really hope that the storytelling competition gives young people across Wales the opportunity to do that. You can find out details about that on the Keeping Safe Online zone at hub.gov.wales. Um, also, the Welsh Government are this year started to compile a range of supportive measures for schools where you, schools can get in contact with other schools who are doing particularly good things. So if you visit hub.gov.wales forward slash peer dash support, you can find out about schools who are doing a range of different things digitally and this time for the first time ever for Safer Internet Day 2021. And you can connect with those schools if you so wish. Details, as I say, on the hub.gov.wales website.
Now, the last thing we're trying to do and find out and really would appreciate your help with uh, on the Padlet at tiny.cc forward slash SIG 2021 is if you go in there and if you're able to deliver a webinar during the week of Safer Internet Day, we'd really welcome the opportunity to work with you and hear from you about that. What we're trying to do this year is have a whole week of events, not just Safer Internet Day itself, but also a whole series of other opportunities for learning and for engagement with a range of different organisations across the week. And if you're able to help us out with that, we'd very much appreciate hearing from you to say, drop the details in the Padlet or indeed you can contact us directly if you'd prefer to. Uh, we always welcome the support that Welsh Government and the Hub team give us in, in promoting Safer Internet Day across Wales. And that's part of the reason why we're here today uh, talking with all of you. Um, obviously, uh, social media plays an important part, not only in the lives of young people and ourselves, but also in our ability to spread the word about Safer Internet Day. And we, we massively appreciate all the support you can give us in amplifying the Safer Internet Day messages across the day. Now, most of our work is carried out on Twitter and we've year on year had the hashtag Safer Internet Day trending for much of the day on Twitter. And you can connect with us at UK underscore SIC. Uh, we'd welcome you to do that. We, we reshare content. We repromote content where it's appropriate to do so. Uh, and we'd like to share that uh, to, to, to spread the information and the participation that young people themselves are actually doing on the day. That's one of the things that we're really, really keen to share. Uh, you can, of course, follow us on Instagram and you can like us on Facebook too. And you'll be able to find the films that we're producing for Safer Internet Day on our YouTube channel. And you can share those films uh, with pleasure through your own platforms too. Again, just to really help us get that message out there. And this year, start targeting even more children and young people and their parents to spread the words around the importance of critical thinking in today's digital spaces. That clear message coming through everything that Kate was saying around the education packs and around the theme this year is very much uh, directed at that misinformation and disinformation that we've all encountered more than once over the last couple of years, but particularly uh, over the last few months. Um, so we welcome your support and we indeed we would like to celebrate your support. So any sector of the UK can register as a supporter and help to deliver activities. So we welcome all supports across any business, governmental, uh, not-for-profit, charitable organisation, sports clubs, regulators, and uh, and wider than that. If you drop onto our website at saferinternetday.org.uk, you can register, you give us a copy of your logo, we'll put your logo onto the page as well, and we'll complete a map uh, to show and demonstrate just how many organisations are involved with Safer Internet Day. You can see an example on the slide there on the left. Um, so it's great that so many of you you do indeed connect with us uh, and if you are going to connect with us or register as a supporter that's brilliant and we'd also love to encourage you to encourage other organizations who maybe haven't previously registered as a supporter to go ahead and do that this year that might be parents who are businesses it might be parents who work for other businesses you could talk to and try and encourage to get those organizations to sign up with us this year and really really spread the word and, and make safer internet day even better than it has been in previous years uh, naturally, as part of being a supporter, we will provide you with a media pack that gives you access to social media plans, blogs, logos and other resources. That will be bilingual as well for those of you who'd like to promote this in the, through the medium of Welsh as well as English. Uh, so there'll be a whole range of content coming your way imminently, but it's, it's absolutely vital to us that you register as that supporter and give us that, that uh, acknowledgement and that desire to share resources and share information on the day. Um, so, I mean, really, it just leads to me to conclude today's webinar with huge thanks to all of you uh, for coming together yesterday on what was a bit of a disastrous feed at lunchtime. We apologise once again for that. There's lots of learning. Uh, I'm sure you've seen that in the email that we've just sent you. Um, it was, a, it was an unfortunate situation, but we really appreciate your time now having got to this point in the video. You've stuck with us. Uh, you've got all the information you need. You know that Safer Insert Day 2021 is on Tuesday the 9th of February, and we look forward to hearing from you, hearing about what you're doing and sharing in the successes of uh, Safer Internet Day next year. Many thanks for your time. Goodbye. Stay safe.